Welcome back friends. In this photo editing tutorial, I'm gonna be freestyling, working on a photo that I like, but I just feel it's missing something, a little bit of heart and soul. And so I wanna use my favorite creative photo editor, Luminar Neo, just to inject a bit of life into this photo. So come along with me on this journey and we're gonna see what creative routes we can take. Let's get into Neo. On a recent trip back to the UK, my wife and I were spoiled to some beautiful snow, so we were out for this walk, and as she headed out into this clearing here, I've grabbed this shot where she's framed by the trees. You can see this sort of inviting area here where it's all lit up, and I thought that'd make for a really nice, interesting photo. But currently, like I said, it's just lacking something. So let's see what we can do inside of Luminar Neo. The first tool I want to work with is the Develop Raw tool. It always is and normally I'll start in the light section here so we can just make sure that we've got the exposure set where we want it to be. Make sure that we're not bleaching out our highlights so I'll normally grab those and just bring those down a little bit and we're also blocking out the shadows and not really having much detail there so I'm going to inject some more life into those shadows just so that we have a nice full dynamic range to work with. And currently we are still bleeding out in the sky, it's just bleached out a little bit. And if you want to see where you're losing details and go into pure white, just press that J key on your keyboard and you're gonna get these little red warnings here. Another way to do that is just to tick these little dots here. So I'm just gonna drop those highlights a little further just to make sure I'm not losing that detail. That's close enough. Now the next thing that I want to do is actually shift the color temperature. Normally when we're thinking of cool snowy scenes, we'd normally associate that with a blue color palette. But in this instance, I actually wanna go the opposite way like I say, we're being creative in this one. I'm just gonna go for a very warm kind of temperature, maybe even push in a little bit of a magenta tint into that as well. And now because we're oversaturating that, and that normally happens when you push your temperature too far one way or the other, and you move away from those kind of neutral, more realistic colors, that oversaturation that creeps in, we can just control that by bringing down the saturation and the vibrance as well if we want. So now I've got this kind of rustic, browny, sepia kind of look, and I don't mind that. I wanna keep it quite warm, so I'll just push a little bit of saturation back into it. Okay, it's looking pretty good technically, but I'd like to inject a little more life into it, and so the Enhance AI, and particularly Accent AI, is normally a pretty good tool just for bumping up contrast, enhancing the colors, all of that sort of stuff. And at full intensity, 100, it's a little excessive, but you know we might, might wanna throw a little bit of that in. Now while I like most of the things about this scene, one thing that's bugging me is the fact that in this sort of more clear area here where we've got more sky visible, the leaves that are still there on the tree, they're just looking a little bit heavy. And I'm wondering whether if we come in and use the clone tool, we can't just remove those. And that will just help to sort of lighten up the sky and just give us a cleaner image. So what I'm gonna do is sample a few areas of tree branches that I think will match with what's already there. And I'm not gonna to get too particular about things like you can see that this branch here doesn't actually connect to the tree. I really don't think it's gonna matter. Yes, you can be a lot more diligent with your cloning if you want to be, but it's not something that I'm gonna concern myself with in this image. And the reason is there's so much busyness going on with all the branches that I really don't think that the viewer is particularly gonna pay attention to any slight mismatches of branches. So all I'm doing is just selecting an area to copy from, and then I'm just pasting that over the new area just by clicking and painting with my brush. Nice and simple. So maybe I'll steal from this bit here to paint into this area. And that's really not matching up at all, but I'm not concerned too much. And now I'll just use the scroll wheel on my mouse just to come back out and just check that I'm happy with that. And if we have a little toggle of our before and after. So if we look at the before, we can see those big blocky zones that those leaves are creating, very distracting, very heavy up there in those thin branches. And that is our retouched version with some very quick cloning. Okay, one idea I've got for this to give it a little bit more life and a bit more feeling is to introduce some sun rays. And I want them to be coming through this little opening area here. And for sun rays to show up, you need something in the atmosphere for that light to actually catch in. And so before I put the sun rays in, what I'm gonna do is actually use the atmosphere AI tool just to introduce some fog. So we're in the fog mode. I don't know how much of this I want. I'm just gonna push it all the way to 100 just to see what it's doing. And you'll notice that the fog is masking around my wife there. Not perfectly, but it's good enough. And I might put some of that up in the sky. So I'm just gonna mask that in 
up the top, close that down, and now I'm gonna actually go for a second introduction of Atmosphere AI, because this time I wanna have some layered fog, something on the floor. So I'm just gonna push the amount to 100 again, and I don't want it just in the distance, I want it right here in the foreground as well. So I'm just gonna grab that depth slider and just have a little play with that and see what that's doing for us. Yep, not too bad. I probably don't want it as bright as that. And I also don't want it applied with the amount set to 100. But as I often say, it's often a good idea just to push that amount of whatever tool it is to 100 so that you can see quite clearly what the effect is that you're introducing. And then it's much easier for you to set the depth slider, the lightness, whatever the controls are for that particular tool, much easier to set them. And then you can come back and just adjust the overall amount Let's go with that. And if we want to see where we've come from, where we got to, which is always a nice thing to do, we just hold down the backslash key so I can see my before and after. Here's our before, here's our after. I feel like I'm moving in the direction I want. Time to add those sun rays. So I'll jump into the sun rays tool. And again, I'm just going to crank that amount all the way to 100. And now the cool thing with this is I can place my sun center so that it's actually going to match where the sun would have been coming from which I'm guessing would have been kind of up here off to the right. And depending where we position this so that the beams are actually cutting through the branches, it's actually gonna change the interaction of these beams of light. I'm gonna push the overall mount slider, which actually brightens it. And if you go the other way, you're gonna darken things down and add more contrast. But I want quite a light look to this where it's coming through. And let's increase the length of those sun rays as well, just to make sure that they're going to come all the way through where we want them to. We can always adjust the mask later as well. And then the penetration slider sort of sets how much of that light is actually going to penetrate through those branches. So I don't need that set too high. And for me personally, I actually prefer to take the number of sun rays away from 100, away from 50, drop it all the way down, sort of very low amount. And that normally actually looks a little bit more believable. And you can tell that although the rays are only changing ever so slightly, the position is also changing as I just move that slightly. The fact that the sun rays are bleaching this area of branches here, I'm not worried about at all. The only bit I'm concerned about is where the rays are coming through in the clearing here, because that's where I want our viewers' attention to go. And so now all I need to do is work with my mask to paint this effect in. So I'm going to grab a brush, have my strength set quite low, just so that I can build it up in passes. And now I'm clicking and painting. And as soon as I release this, I'm going to see the effect of those rays coming through just where that pink was that I was painting. So the pink obviously represents the mask that I'm painting in. And wherever it's pink, it's saying, hey, reveal whatever the effect is that we're working with. So in this case, the sun rays. Let's push this strength a little higher so we can just get a little more of that into this clearing nice and quickly. And you can toggle between painting in and erasing it. So for example, I feel like it's just a little heavy handed over my wife here. And so I'm just going to start to erase that effect from her. I also don't want it appearing on the floor here because obviously this is in shadow. So we don't really want to see too much of the rays of light there or potentially over this side. Something like that's pretty good. Let's have a toggle of our before and our after, before and after. Now, one of the great things I find with Luminar Neo is the fact that we can double up with our tools. So the sun rays are looking okay at the moment, but I feel like I want to just have a little bit more of sun blooming and bleaching going on in the tree, just for a sense of believability. So what you can do is actually have some more solid sun rays, and then you can have some softer sun rays, play with those settings, and just get it exactly where you want it. And so let's have another round of sun rays and see what we can do. So the tool we were just working on with Sunrays, that has dropped into our edit section, along with other changes that we've made, Enhance AI, Clone, the couple of Atmosphere tools, and the Sunrays. And now we get to add another Sunrays if we want. So I'm just gonna grab the amount slider again, push it all the way to 100, and that's gonna allow me to see exactly what's going on with the position of my sun here. So we can play with things like the sun radius and increase that. We can increase the glow radius, the glow amount, and you can see if I toggle the before and the after, it's also added in some more sun rays over the top. So layering those effects one on top of the other can actually help to add believability to the overall effect. I'm gonna drop the amount down just a little bit. And again, I'm gonna use my mask to paint it in exactly where I want it because I don't want this effect going everywhere. 
just a subtle pop up there in the tree. I think that's going to help us out quite a bit. And I also liked what those extra rays were doing through this clearing here as well. So let's have a little toggle before and after. It's pretty subtle, but I prefer that. We're dealing with a snowy scene here, but at the moment I feel like it's kind of missing something because there is actually no snowfall, nothing in the sky. So my idea is, can we actually introduce some snow falling through the whole scene and overlay that on top of this existing photo? That's what I'm going to try and do now with Luminar's layers. Let's have a look. So I'm going to come over to the add layers icon here. And what I thought might work would be actually using a night sky. So I'm actually gonna stretch this photo. Sorry, I won't stretch it. I will fill it so that it's not actually distorting the photo. We're gonna fill because we want circular snowdrops. And hopefully you can see my vision that these are actually gonna become snowflakes, not snowdrops. What's a snowdrop? So a snowflake falling in the scene. Now, for us to actually see our photo below, we don't wanna just drop the opacity and kind of have half and half, although you can start to get a sense of what I'm going for here. What I'm gonna actually try doing is just changing the blend mode from normal to screen, and that is going to allow us to see the brighter pixels and it's gonna hide the darker ones. So as I increase that up, you can see all of those bits of snow now. So we're heading in the right way, but it's also bleaching out a lot of the photo. And the reason for that is the night sky layer isn't actually pure black in the background. It's lighter than that. So what I would like to do is actually change this so that we have a darker background. Um, we can do that several ways. I'm just gonna jump into the exposure, make sure that we're not losing our highlights, pull down the black slightly, and we could also use the curves tool just to make sure that that point there is actually starting closer to black and go for something like that. Now when I change that blend mode from normal to screen, we're just gonna see those snowflakes and we probably don't need it set to 100%, I don't know, somewhere around sort of 80, that's gonna be fine. And the other thing that I need to change is just match the color that we have because currently it's very bluey. So I'm going to come down to the temperature. If I grab that and push that all the way into the yellow section, hopefully you can see now that the snowflakes have changed color to match our scene much better. Okay, I'm relatively happy with my fake snow. So now what I want to do to edit the photo as a whole again is I will actually need to export this photo as a nice high quality TIFF that I'm gonna start working on afresh so I can apply globally all these other creative tools because currently, unfortunately, the way Neo is set up, any changes I make are gonna apply specifically to a single layer. And that can be very helpful sometimes, like when you saw I was changing the color of the snow to match the layer underneath. However, Skylum really needs to give us an option to actually merge those layers down. That'd be very helpful. So Skylum, if you're listening, please, please, please look at adding that. But for now, we'll export it and start working again. So I'm going to export my merged snow scene as a TIFF with an Adobe RGB color space, nice big color space, and a bit depth of 16. That means we can carry on working without losing information. So as you can see now, we're just working on one layer and currently we have no edits applied whatsoever. So another benefit is this frees up our computer's memory because we don't have any history for the computer to worry about. So we're starting afresh. So Luminar Neo should be pretty zippy again. So what I'm wanting to do here is just play with the structure just ever so slightly because I just feel like we've lost a little bit of image definition just by adding that atmosphere in. So again, I'm gonna use my mask, radial mask this time, just to apply this centrally. Currently we're going the opposite way to what I want. So I'm just gonna invert that. So that's gonna bring out details through the center of the frame and just fade off towards the edge of that. So let's just close that down and have a look. Here's our before. Here's our after, nice bit of detail in the center of the frame. The next thing that's kind of bothering me about the photo is I find that we don't really have too much in the way of contrast. The tonality throughout the image is pretty much the same apart from this very bright area just at the top center here. And so what I'd like to do is just see if we can't darken down the edge of the frames and that's gonna help bring our attention more to the center. And a great tool for doing that is the vignette. It's gonna get it done nice and quickly. So again, I'm gonna be really aggressive with this, push it to minus 100, and that's gonna allow me just to fine tune what I'm after. Now, if I take the roundness into the negative territory, you can see that the vignette kind of adheres to the frame of the photo. 
but what if I take it the other way? If I push it all this way, it's gonna get more elongated and stick to the sides of the frame and leave the center bit alone more. So I quite like that. I'm also gonna just feather it in slightly. Now, normally I say, push your feathering all the way. It's gonna give a much more believable vignette, which it does. However, I want that transition to drop off a bit quicker here because I just want it applying more to the edges and leaving the center alone. Now we can push the inner light up just to brighten that center part a little bit if we want to. I don't wanna go too far, but maybe we'll do a little bit of that. Now the great thing with Luminar Neo's vignette tool, unlike other photo editors, is we can actually choose where we want the center of that vignette. And so in our case, rather than having it bang in the middle, what I'd like to do is actually just bring it down a little further so it's starting to really highlight my wife right here. Now I've got the overall look of the vignette kind of how I want it, I can just grab the amount slider and just ease it all the way back. So now I'm just free to tease this in. I can push it all the way to minus 100, back to zero, and just kind of find that Goldilocks sweet spot where I want it. So somewhere around halfway, minus 48, that's fine. But I wouldn't mind darkening down the extremities of this photo even more. And that's one of the great things as I sort of alluded to with the double use of atmosphere, double use of sun. What about double use of vignette? Absolutely, we can do that. So again, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing as we did before. Just have a play around with this with the settings at minus 100 and just get this kind of looking how I want it. Don't want any inner light this time. And for this vignette, it's all gonna be about the size. You can see that as I actually increase that number in the size setting, it's pushing it further towards the edges, which is what I'm after. And now I can grab the amount and again, just bring that back down. Let's have a little look at what that's done. Here's our before, here's our after. Okay, let's get into the creative section. This is where my favorite tools exist inside Luminar. And for this one, in this snowy scene, I reckon dramatic is gonna really help us out. Okay, look at that. When I push that to 100, we get an almost black and white image again. Very snowy, like really powerful enhancement for a snowy scene. So I'm definitely gonna use some of this. Not too much, I don't know, um, something about 32. Nah, let's go higher. What about 57? Yep. And now with the local contrast slider, you can see if I push that to 100, everything gets a bit gritty and grungy. I don't really want it like that. I want it a lot softer. So I can push that all the way back down to zero. And we can see what our before and after look like. Okay, not bad. Probably want just a little bit more local contrast. Before and after. Yep, that's pretty cool. I still feel like we can bring out more impact in this photo by bringing attention more to the center of the frame and darkening down the edges. And one of my favorite ways to do things like that is to actually jump into the develop tool and then use the curves tool because you've got so much control with curves. So if I start darkening this down, we're really just bringing out more contrast in this photo and I quite like that. And then if I wanna be specific, like darkening down the foreground just a little bit more, I can do exactly the same again. Yes, we could do something else. We could come into the Relight AI slider and darken it down that way. But look, I'm kind of uh, getting off on showing you how we can double up on tools today. So again, I'm gonna jump into the curves, darken down one more time, maybe even grab this top slider, which controls the highlights. And if we bring that down, we're gonna kill any highlights in the foreground here. But Currently, we're applying that to the whole photo. That's not what I want, but hey ho, we've got a mask. That's what it's for. So we could either brush this in, we could use a linear gradient just pulled up from the bottom. That would be an alternative way to get this done quickly. But I think just painting it in with a brush just gives you a little bit more control. Because we're already darker at the edges, I probably don't want to double up on this effect right at those edges. I'm just going to stick to the center of the frame here. And if there's any other areas where I think, ah, oh, you know what, let's just darken those down a bit as well, like in the edges here, we can do that and let's toggle out before and after. And you can see that's just sort of creating an L shape of darkness on the left and the bottom of the frame. Okay, heading in the right direction. Let's go back into the creative section now. And what about adding my favorite tool, Mystical? Yeah, come on, let's crank some of this in and see what that looks like. Okay, far too much again, but look at that lovely mystical quality that it adds into our photo. You know, I might wanna add just a bit of that. So let's, I don't know, put that around 40. And what's going on if we grab the shadows? So we can either darken those shadows down even more or not push them quite as far. What about the smoothness? We can take it away and make that photo more gritty and grungy again, or we can push it all the way to 100 and soften it right off. Well, having it set to 100 might be a little excessive. Let's just ease that off a little bit and have a look before and after. 
Okay, in terms of an overall look, I like where we've got to. I think the image has got some nice tonality and contrast in it now, and it's got a bit more feeling than it had when, it, when we first started. However, one thing that I think would benefit this photo is to actually inject more of a dual tonality to it. Currently, we're in a monotone look. We're almost sepia, and I feel like we would get more out of introducing a complementary palette, perhaps going for like a bluey tone, cooling off the shadows and keeping that nice warmth in the sky. So I'm gonna do that. And I think one last thing we'll also do is just lift the shadows up a little bit whilst keeping the contrast, which sounds like a hard thing to do because contrast is darkness and light. How are you gonna lift the shadows and keep the contrast? I'll show you how we can do it with curves. Fantastic way to do it. Let's have a look. Okay, I was just about to jump into the toning section and fire away with that, but you know what? There's one more thing I'd like to do, and I thought that would happen on a freestyle video, is things just pop into my mind. Look, it's just getting a little bit lost, the contrast out here, and I'm wondering if we can actually bring that back. So if I grab like the mid-tone contrast and have a little play with it, and then we can actually drop that down or increase it that way. Yeah, look at that. If I push the mid-tone balance up, we're actually getting a lot more contrast in the mid-tones through here. I don't need it to be as excessive as that, but look, here we go, let's have a little play. I don't know, something like that. What about the highlights? Let's have a little look. That brings back a little bit out there as well. Again, I'm gonna be using my mask here, so I'm not too worried. Nor, you know what, I actually really like pushing those shadows down further into darkness. Let's see before, let's see after, before and after. Let me just add a bit of a mask to that. So I'm gonna use a radial gradient just to say that I definitely want that effect in the middle. So I need to invert that so that we're saying, yes, please add lots of that through the center of the frame. We'll come back out of that radial mask and have a little toggle of how it's looking before and after, before and after, nice. And I don't really need to add too much around the outside actually. Maybe just a little bit through there before and after. Yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, back to where we were before, which was adding some toning to our image. So let's jump into the toning tool and we'll start working on the shadows. And I'm hoping to add some nice blues into that. Oh, look at that already. I really like the look of that. I rarely have any intention of setting anything as high as 100 in any of these tools, but just having it there straight away, I'm like, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I may, I may end up doing that. Now let's push the saturation on the highlights high as well. And it's going to allow us to better see the complementary colors between the highlights and the shadows. And once you're happy with the colors that you're introducing, you can jump into the balance section and actually toggle between how much of the shadows you want to see how much of the highlights you want to see and set that at a point where you feel that that balance is just right. So I'm gonna go somewhere there and now I've got the look that I want. I just need to play with the amount. Obviously 100 is far too much, but we can ease this down. Because I wanna keep that toning in the shadow, I need to keep that amount somewhere where I set it to originally. And then because the highlights are just a little oversaturated, I can come in and individually grab the highlights and just bring that saturation down. So it's a really powerful way to fine tune the highlight and shadow toning. I don't know, something like that. Let's have a look before and after. Now the last thing I want to do is just lift up these shadows a little bit, which does sound weird because I've worked so hard to introduce a nice level of contrast into this photo. But hopefully, if this works, you'll agree that it's a really nice way to just soften off the image. Like already, I haven't done too much to that curve other than just lift that black point and it's just softening things. But that doesn't mean we have to lose contrast. If we bring this back down, even bring the highlights down as well and just keep a nice S curve in this, we can still have the best of both worlds. We've got contrast and we've softened the shadows as well. Before I call this done, and I'd recommend you do this as well, just let your image sit, go away, come back, see it with fresh eyes, and you might see some adjustments that you need to make. But what the hey, this was a bit of a freestyle. We're gonna put it on screen now, the before and after. Okay, so here's our before. Here's our after, before and after.
Doing these more creative edits purely for the joy of editing alone. I really love it, but I'd still love to know what you thought about this tutorial, what you thought about my processing. Let me know in the comments below, guys. And if you don't have Luminar Neo and you like the look of it and you want to get hold of it, I've got a discount code, discount link in the description below. Help yourself to that. And I'll see you in the next video. I've got heaps of training on Luminar Neo on my channel. So if you haven't subscribed already, you can do that by clicking that right there. And if you want to see the next video that's going to help you out with your editing, go and click that one. I'll see you over there. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye for now.